let's go to the dashboard open up the YouTube stream to see what it looks like yo 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 testing testing one two three testing testing one two three one two three all right so i think all the volume is good all right yo 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 what's good y'all welcome back to another awesome edition of manga after dark if you're here and I'm here, you know what time it is. Pirate Hour is amongst us. Shout out to TCB Scans for sailing the high seas every week to get us a chapter of One Piece several, day early, several days early. Shout out to the lads and ladettes over at TCB, uh, TCB Scans. And hope everyone's doing well. Hope everyone's uh, week has been going well. Um... For us, this is finals week, so it's the last week of the quarter. Uh, so if you're in school, hope classes are going well. If you're in work, if you're at work or in life, hope life is going well. Uh, but One Piece is here, so without further ado, let's jump into chapter eleven, eleven of One Piece. So last chapter was some heat. So we had the girls showing up in there. Either this is their Zoan form, or this is like their true demon form. Who knows? Uh, I love listening to One Piece theorists talking about how, like, like Par Vision, where he talks about how, like, back in the day, each devil fruit was an actual thing, and then somehow they converted that thing into the devil fruit. So maybe, so like, how you could turn animals into zone fruits. These are the actual demons rather than demon fruits. Who knows? Because um, last last chapter they didn't give us like. Uh, devil fruit names they just gave us demon names so that fueled the speculation that they're not devil fruit users but actual devils per se <clears throat> but yeah hopefully we get some clarity this chapter about whether the gross are devil fruit users or they're actually some type of demonic entities uh, that emu conjured up or some or gave them this power but who knows? Like Oda could go many different directions uh, with with what's happening at Egghead right now. So without further ado, let's dive into chapter eleven eleven. So we have all the people at all the principal parties at Egghead on the Straw Hat side. It's a pretty cool color panel. So we got they're all eating French fries. So we got Luffy, we got Vegapunk, Frankie, uh, Brooke. Where's Robin? We haven't seen Robin in a minute. We got Sanji, Jimbei. Uh, Bonnie, Nami, Chopper, Zoro, Usopp. Oh, look at Kuma in, uh, Kuma in the back. They're all riding jellyfish. Adapted cover request by M. Miu. The Straw Hats on a deep sea stroll using glowing jellyfish as parasols. <clears throat> so we see like the uh, the dome. Chapter 1111, the sun's shield, a looming threat. So Marcus Mars... Uh, the Itsumari just crashes into the dome. We see black lightning emanating from the impact zone. So we got a close up of Marcus Mars. It's a little. That's a. That's a beastly like design. See, so we get a close up of Marcus's eyes. Oh, he broke through. So he broke through and he's sailing through. And that's Jimbei. Jimbei's just looking on, and Jimbei sees him. Jimbei, what in the world? This hockey is unreal. The fight's over, Zoro. Let's move. Zoro. <sighs> Jimbei. Zoro fucked him up. Oh my god. Zoro, ugh. Jimbei. <sighs> and he's back into his human form. And he hears the flapping. Raw Blue Chi, a cipher pull ages zero. Where is York? said Marcus Mars. 
And Lucci look like he's about to shit bricks. Then Jinbei, we have to run. Zora, what is that thing? Then Lucci. I'm still I'm impressed Lucci's still standing, to be honest. Lucci, she's still tied up in the control room. It's on the fourth floor of building A. And he's holding a transponder snail, a, a black transponder snail. The the two that just ran off are Roranora Zoa and Jinbei, the Knight of the Sea. They should know who Jinbei is. Uh, they they hired him. They 1,000% should know who Jinbei is. There are five more Straw Hats up there and two Vegapunks. Uh, Luchi continues. They're preparing to escape from the back entrance of the Labo Stratum. Damn, Luchi's a sn man. Uh, Luffy, Luffy's so trustworthy. Also, there are 85 Cypherpole agents and four Seraphim imprisoned in the basement. He has all the details. Luchi continues, and we have six minutes before Vegapunk's message. Then we got Marcus Mars continues. Splendid work, and Luchi's on his knees. He looks like Slifer the Sky Dragon. That's pretty dope. Then Marcus, I have no further queries. They, Marcus Mars is flying away. Then Luchi, one last thing. My partner should be in the control room. And he was badly injured. Please find a way to spare him. Lucci yells. Marcus. That might not be possible. <laughs> it is hard to single out. A lone insect. When you're exterminating the hive. Ouch. So Marcus Mars is flying towards the Labo Stratum. Luffy. Giant old timers. It's really you. And they're like holding Luffy in their hand. It's been over two years, Straw Hats. We hardly recognize you. Gah, ba 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 ba. They tell tales about the god in Elbaf. Where did you learn about learn about how he looked? Oh. Some around my stream. I think we're still good. My stream yards is acting up. All right, gah, ba ba ba. They tell tales about the god in Elbaf. Where did you learn about how he looked? Luffy, hmm? Your appearance. It's a pleasant surprise. Gah, ba 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 ba. She, 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 she. I don't get it, but we can talk about, we can talk later. Then we got, um, this is Top Man. Giants. Then we got Garcia Saturn. A most unpalatable complication. What enormous beasts, the Giants said. It feels like we're back in the jungles of Elbaf. Old timers, we're not meant to fight right now. We're supposed to run away. We know, San uh, we know Sanji told us... Uh, when we bump, oh, uh, th that was Luffy's telling them. So that was Luffy. Old timers, we're not meant to fight right now. We're supposed to run away, said Luffy. Then, um, bro, uh, Dory, uh, we know Sanji told us when we bumped into him earlier. So the, the, the flashback, when you see him, when you see Luffy, tell him we're meeting on the other end of the island. Dory, Brogy, I'm counting on you. Got it? Got it. See you there. Alright, so we decided to help you. So we got like a... a so Oda drew a schematic. So we decided to help you escape. So uh, we have a diagram. So Luffy's... So they're all the way on the opposite end of the island. So Luffy's group. So we got Luffy, Dory, and Brogy. Nami and Usopp's group are up on the Labo Stratum. After we saw the, so we decided to help you escape after we saw the news. So the goal is to get to the ship on Elbaf. So Sanji and Vegapunk are about halfway to the ship, to the uh, giant ship. And Bonnie's group is basically at the giant ship. The report said that the Navy was surrounding you after all. And he's blowing the war horn. And everyone hears it, huh? The signal from the captains, they found straw hats. Head to the ship. 
We're getting out of here. Rescuing them was our only goal. It's not like warships have treasure to loot anyways. You are not wrong. These are the giants. Yeah. <laughs> then the, uh, I think there's a marines. Damn it. They're signaling a retreat. This is top man. That won't do. Allow me to blow a, blow a horn of my own. The giants. Hmm. It'll drive home the futility of escape. And I think Luffy's using future sight. Then Top Man opens his mouth. Roar! And we see black lightning coming from his mouth. And the shockwave is pushing them back. So the giants are putting up their shield to block. And Luffy's blocking like this. And he's, we see black lightning emanating. It's like a black void. It's like a black... It's like a singularity event emanating from his mouth. That's weird. And we see the buildings and the trees are also bending from the roar. Luffy, ooh, what? And his his eyes, his straw hat, his sandals, his hair got knocked back. The giants, huh? Is this Conqueror? I think this is Conqueror's hockey. Everyone, you see giant bolts of black lightning. You see fire. Everyone's screaming, yeah! The island's going crazy again. Yeah, this is Conqueror's hockey. People are passing out. Hey, these are the Marines. You good, Straw Hat? You held on. Your body's your body's so funky. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're like trying to prevent Luffy from flying off screen. Luffy, that was close. A conquerors hockey war. Yeah, so this is so Top Man Rockery is a confirmed conquerors hockey user. Like, I don't, like, people just seriously thought the girls say were hockeyless losers. Like, that's weird. Like, why would they hold, like, even though it's a political position, in the world of One Piece, you need, you still need to be able to fight to keep your position. That's the one lesson we see in One Piece. Whatever position you have, there will be someone gunning for it, so you, so you need to be able to protect it. Whether it is you have treasure, whether it's you have, you have an island, that's a consistent theme. You have some type of position, so usually you're strong. So, like, the fact that, no, we haven't seen hockey, so maybe they don't have it. That that would be so dumb. That would be one of the dumbest things Oda could write. If the girls say had no hockey. Especially if they're, like, 900 years old. That, that means they would have 900 years to learn hockey and they couldn't do it. Or they wouldn't do it. That's ridiculous. So, I'm glad we got this out of the way. Um, the simplest answer for what the black streaks were, the black lightning bolts were, was hockey. That was the simplest answer. Um, and the idea that these are... Because people are like, oh, fodder... Like, regular people shouldn't see be able to see hockey. But people forget these aren't regular people. These are commissioned marine officers. These are marine officers who are called to be presented... Pre present, present during a buster call. Not just any buster call. One of the most important buster calls since O'Hara. So... Them being able to see hockey makes total sense. Like these are these should be all elite marines. I know it's elite marines is an oxymoron in the world of One Piece, but the fact that the rank and file here at Egghead sees hockey, that shouldn't be crazy to people. That makes perfect sense that these are top tier elite marines and they should be able to see hockey. Uh, but let me dive back into the chapter. My stream labs is 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 mess is looking all wonky and stuff. But the stream still looks like it's fine, so uh, whatever. Uh, so let me continue. A conqueror's hockey roar? Who is this guy? Some government big shot, said Luffy. What? What just happened? So it looks like Top Man's legs turned into wheels. And he's now like jumping at them. They go, ooh -ah. Brogy, and then uh, Brogy goes right. Sun shield, Valen. So Top Man's Top Man's massive. So he slams into Dory and Brogy, and they put their shields up to block his tusks, and his tusks turn to swords. 
Whoa! I didn't know that. That's that's pretty. I didn't notice that. Yeah, his tusks look like they're blades now. So, top man, what quirk of destiny ties you together? Do you have any idea who that man is? The giants. Of course we do. Gya ba 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 ba. He's our buddy. Gya 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 gya. And they bashed him with their shield. Split skyled. And Top Man goes flying back. Crash into the background. If that's where you stand. So this is Saturn. Then we will have to erase you. So so top, uh, so Saturn's like inhaling air. He's sucking in air. F from the uh, we, so we will have to erase you from world's history along with them. So he's like spitting venom balls at them. Luffy, that's venom. Watch out. So Luffy grabs a tree. And he's like biting the tree. What? Wait a what? Where did the paint come from? Luffy materialized pa black paint from the ether to coat the the tree and turned it into a base. He willed it down to a baseball bat. And coated it with the black paint. And Luffy, she, she, she. And he has a helmet now. The drip. The merchandising. Baseball Luffy's gonna go crazy. So Luffy's winding up. And he hits all of the poison bullets. And Luffy, yeah, ha, ha, ha. Have a taste of your own medicine. So Top Man and Saturn are bracing the incoming impact. They they detonate like nukes, Luffy. Huh? They explode? Captains, the flames will block off the forest. All right, let's go. So these are the giants uh, that came with Dorian Brogy. They're gone through. Yeah, ba ba ba. No, we have to hurry. These guys can't die. Huh? What? So you see all the grosse all emanating from the flames and they're all growling. Then let's get a move on. Are they really immortal? Said Dory. No idea, but no matter what. So this is Luffy. No idea, but no matter what I do, they keep coming back. Brogy, I've never heard of any race or ability granting that kind of power. We may be running, but I still count this as a victory. Yeah, ba 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 ba. So Nami, Jimbe, Zoro, Hurry. So they're at the uh, the Sunny. We're on our way. So Jim Jimbe's moving fast. It's faster to just run normally. In front of the ship, look. So this is Bonnie, and there's three people standing in front of the ship. Come on, bro. Who are these dudes? You're not going anywhere, Jewelry Bonnie. Sanji. Is this going to be Sanji's fight? Three fodder marines? Well, they're not fodder. They're, they're vice admirals. We put respect on their name. So three vice admirals are standing in front of the giant ship. Oh, that's, um, um, Atlas. So, um, so Marcus... Where's the room displayed on the monitor? Atlas, yeah, a monster. No, not Atlas, this is York, my bad, York. It spoke, who are you? <laughs> Leave me be, said York. Kizaru's still on his back, the smoke. Kizaru-san, are you hurt? Let us treat you. Kizaru, my wounds, my wounds run deep. We should attend to them right away. Just let me rest already. <laughs> He's just covering his eyes. Then we got the uh, intercom. Come in. Something way bigger than a giant just showed up. It's here. On the northwest shore. Creek. Thud. 
thud. The flames aren't even phasing it. It looks like a titan in the middle of an inferno, and it seems to be growling something. Forgive me, Joy Boy. So, it, so it's heading towards Luffy, and it is huge. An apology for what? So there will be a three-week break of One Piece. Wow. All right, that, that was pretty dope. All right, what's happening with my stream labs? All right, it's back to normal now. All right, we Gucci, we Gucci. Uh, that was a dope chapter of um, of One Piece. Oh man. What? Ha! Huh, it's hard to try to think. Like, what's the? It's where to where to begin. All right, so, so Marcus Mars got through that barrier, no problem. Oh, first of all, Lucci surviving that attack was impressive. Um, I know the power scalers are going to have a field day with that, especially the Zoro Sanji uh, truthers and the Zoro is close to Luffy people uh, are struggling. Um, but I don't know, like. As I, I've said previously, that Oda's going to make characters as strong as they need to be for the situation, uh, for the given situation. So, like, even so, so like, I forgot my own words for a bit because I was stunned that Luchi is, like, strong. Like, not just strong, just like him and, like, the idea that Luchi could fight King just sounds weird. Like, I, like, just saying that, like, Luchi and King are not just equals. Luchi might be stronger than King. Sounds crazy to me. Um, but we just seen it. This was a... Oh, this wasn't, like, a, a power... This wasn't final attack, Zoro. But for Luchi to take this attack, that still... That means something. Uh, this wasn't Bandana, Zoro. This wasn't Bandana on the verge of death, Zoro. So it's not like... This is all of Zoro's energy, but I fully expected this to beat Luchi at the end of the last chapter. Uh, for him to be not just awake, but fully conscious, willing to keep fighting, and he was able to relay all the information uh, to Marcus Mars. He was he like if if Luchi had to keep fighting, he fully could have. The fight definitely didn't end, uh, so that. Part, I have to readjust Luchi at my power scaling. Um, so I'm guessing we're going to run this fight back at another time. Because uh, that's the only reason why you would have this outcome. That you want Zoro to fight Luchi at another point. Because um, otherwise, I don't see the point of keeping Luchi awake and standing like this. Um, but that was a pretty... And, and then Marcus Mars went to find York... All right, so that's pretty cool. So, Top Man has so at least Top Man has Conqueror's Hockey. Um, I assume all of them has Conqueror's Hockey, but that's an assumption. Um, so yes, I'm pretty curious to see. Do they have Infusion? Because this Conqueror Hockey War apparently it did work. Like Luffy, for someone like Luffy to be like phased by it, that means something. And Luffy said that was close. Like he that that was an attack that Luffy was worried about. Um, so that's that's something to note with power, in terms of power wise. At least Top Man has impressive hockey because Luffy said it. All right, it's it's pretty dope. But the Luffy conjuring the baseball bat and Al the paint. He didn't conjure the baseball. Bat. He conjured the paint. I I y'all. Where did the paint come came from? That might be the title of the chat of the video. Where did the hell did the paint come from? Uh, this is hockey paint. Like is that like like did uh, Luffy achieve uh, a black blade before Zoro? Like that might that might be the title of the chapter. <laughs> like that was pretty dope. And I mean, also like. Do all the Gorosei regenerate at the same time? It took... St. Jupiter has been down for a minute. 
So we see that he's 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 like regenerating at at the end of this chapter, but Jupiter like Marcus uh, uh Garcia Saturn when he was getting hurt and regenerating it was it didn't seem like it took that long, uh, before Jupiter he definitely has been injured for a minute, um, but we see that he's coming to, and we got the three loser Marines, blocking, uh, <laughs> blocking Bonnie's path. Frankie should be able to handle them. Kuma's body is there. Maybe she could command Kuma's corpse to do something. Uh, I assume Sanji's going to pull up and handle them. That's my assumption. Because um, the three of these dudes shouldn't be nice enough for Sanji to not be able to fold them. Like, Sanji should be able to pack them all up pretty easily. Like, a couple of kicks each. And that's it. Like, I doubt these... Like, I, I doubt these dudes have... Hockey that's comparable to Queen. That's that's the part where it's like, all right, Oda, you need to chill. Like King and Lucci being comparable is one thing. These Father Marines taking Sanji kicks, especially if Sanji's serious, that'd be wild. That would be wild, Oda. Let's not play with that. Um, but I assume they these Marines exist to get fodderized. Like this is supposed to be like. Now Oda sets up tension, and sometimes he delivers on the tension, and sometimes the the tension is like false tension, and the character gets fodderized. Like the um, what's his face, the guy with the springs, and and how we always thought um, he like he and Luffy were comparable in strength, and then Luffy one shotted him. There's been plenty of examples where it's like, oh my god. And then the character is just overwhelmingly more powerful than their opponent. Bonnie might use the Nika ability. Because Bonnie now knows Nika exists, Bonnie might be able to use the story of the future and just one shot all three of these dudes in one go. I think that would be what I would put my money on, would, would be how you resolve the issue with the three Marines, is that Bonnie has her confidence back. So now it's going to be the story of the future, give me a Nika ish future. And one tap each one of them. That's how I expect it to go. Or maybe she one taps uh, two of them and Sanji gets the third. That might be it. Or Bonnie gets one of them. Kuma gets one of them. And Sanji gets one of them. Um, but these three should not. I hope Oda does. Oh, with the pacing of Egghead, Oda won't uh, play this out. This will resolve itself pretty quickly. Um... The fact that York and Marcus Mars is now talking. Um, so, so a lot of people... So, another... Uh, I was watching another Parvision um, uh, stream. And he and one of his theories is that the the place where the stream is emanating is actually Kamabaka, not Egghead. I actually like that. I really would be... I really... That would be dope if that was the plot twist, is that... Because... Because if Vegapunk is extremely confident that the world government can't stop the transmission, that's for certain. At every point in the transmission, he has said, they don't got enough time to stop it. Nothing they can do, they ain't got enough time. With They cannot stop it in 10 minutes. Impossible. Vegapunk is extremely confident. He, last chapter, he even said, even if they're doing, even if they're trying to stop it, they won't have enough time. He said that last chapter with 7 minutes left. So the, so like, Maybe, like, as Marcus Mars is, like, interrogating York, York is, like, scared. And then finally he gets York to, to like, focus on, I'm Marcus Mars, you idiot. Tell me where the hell is the transmission. And you're going to be like, it's not here, it's on Kamabaka. Uh, so that might be how how this resolves, or, or York is going to tell him where to go. But then he's going to go there and realize that it's, uh, it's not there, it's somewhere else. Um, but... I definitely agree with Parvision that with how it's going, there's no way it's on Egghead. No way. Um, or this sounds like, or like he has like a layered trap. Like he expects them to show up to do something. I was also watching a King of the Lightning stream. And they, someone, someone said that what if they had uh, Vegapunk planted hidden cameras and the people, and like all of this stuff is being filmed currently. He's also going to play that. I also like that idea. That maybe the room that York is going to tell him is going to have like a camera there. It's going to be like 
a live feed showing Marcus Myers on camera. Um, so I definitely think Vegapunk has like a really cool plot twist or a really cool um, spin on it. For uh, I think Oda has a really good plot twist for us. Because, uh, yeah, the more I think about it with how confident Vegapunk is, because he should understand what the World Cup could do. He understands the power of a Buster Call. He understands the power of the Marines. He understands the pacifista. He understands the technology technology that the world government has at their disposal. So for him to be so confident that they can't stop the transmission, he he, he shouldn't even know about the uh, mother uh, the um whatever the mother frame is, the sixteen nuke beam things. He should understand what that is too. So like for him to be this confident that whatever happened to Lucia. Either can't happen to Egghead, or if it did happen to Egghead, it wouldn't change nothing. Vegapunk is oddly confident in this stream that the world government can't stop the transmission. So, like, I, I like Part of Vision's idea that that is not emanating from Egghead. It's somewhere else. And then, if it's Kamabaka, um... Because, like, I want Dragon to be in the story, and I don't see why they keep showing Dragon just to... Just for him not to be physically involved in the story. We've seen a lot of Dragon in this arc for Dragon to not actually play a role. That's kind of weird. Um, and plus, a few chapters ago, we had Dragon thinking, and he had a conversation with Shaka, and Shaka said, I'm not going to be alive for this much longer. Uh, so that could be a conversation where that's when Shaka says, hey, so this is why we're going to leave this here with you? And then, then Dragon was given the dead dead man switch, uh, uh, given this thing to act that got activated by the dead man switch. That could be a possibility. Um, but yeah, for Vegapunk to be this confident, there's no way the transmission is coming from Egghead. And I'm interested about the Kizaru part too. Um, we assume that Kizaru that um. That Aokiji and Akiyuni have awakenings because of what we've seen from Punk Hazard. So I would assume that Kizaru also is the awakened Devil Fruit user. Um, so the question is, is Kizaru on the ground still because A, he's physically actually beat up. B, he's emotionally beat up so he doesn't want to get up. Or C, he understands if he gets up, he's going to have to go balls to the wall, awakening... I have to be a hundred percent serious, Kizaru. So that's that's where I'm thinking that we might see Kizaru come back with a vengeance in a couple of chapters, if not next chapter, because um, he's not down for the count. He's still he's still uh, conversing with the other Marines, um, and he looks like he just doesn't want to get. So I think Kizaru, um, if he gets up, he's gonna like show us like his full power because there's nothing really left to hide at this point for the admirals once we once oda showed that luffy was like tears above what's the point i don't need to see there's no point of holding an admiral's power just show it they, they can't scare luffy anyway so what's the point of saving it Maybe Kizaru could show himself to be the measuring stick that Zoro, Sanji, and Jinbei got to reach. Maybe that could be something. Um, but, like, Kizaru doesn't threaten Luffy. So, like, I, I was watching King of, King of Lightning stream there a few, there was a few streams ago. And one of his tier 3 subs was upset that the Marines are, like, not threatening. And people were always like, oh, no, they are threatening. That was just rolling my eyes because... Just because you're threatening to Usopp doesn't mean you're threatening in the world of One Piece. And that was basically the argument where it's like, well, if you ignore the Yonko and the top tier, the Admirals are scary. That's a dishonest point because we only focus on the Yonkos and the top tiers. So if the Marines can't fight those characters and they're not relevant, who I don't care that they scare Cavendish because we will never see the conflict between Cavendish and Kizaru, or Cavendish and Akainu. We will never see the the um, the Bartolomeo pirates fight the Marines. We won't see it. So therefore, that interaction is indeed irrelevant to the discussion. The Marines power-wise are irrelevant if Luffy and or the Yonko are just that much stronger than the Admirals. 
So there's no point for Oda to save it. Just if Kizaru has an awakening, please let us see it. This is the show it to us. Let us see what the Pika Pika fruit uh, does at the max setting. Like, there's no reason to save the power, power, save his awakening. Because we saw Luffy fold him literally and toss him like a pizza. Uh, Zoro and Sanji and Jinbei seeing an awakened Logia should help them level set their powers. That are, Zoro should be like, all right. I struggle a little bit with Luchi. That's kind of wild. If I want to fight the admirals of the world, I can't be struggling with the Luchis of the world. So Zoro need, kind of needs to see that. Same thing with Sanji. Sanji needs people to be like, all right, you know, Kizaru's kind of nice. I need to level up. I need to hit harder, get faster. Like, I wasn't able to track Kizaru's movement. My hockey needs to get better. Like, something like that. Uh, Jinbei's a seasoned fighter. So Jinbei, I think, understands where he is power-wise. Um, but since he's now part of the main main character group, he's gonna get a power. He's gonna get another power up. So, um, so if we saw an awakened Kizaru, that might give them further inspiration. But there's no reason to save it because Luffy's just so much stronger that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. So now I'm going down to the comments. Alright, this is funny. So there's a post where uh, someone has Jinbei holding Zoro's sword. And Zoro's like jumping, trying to reach the swords. That's pretty funny. Um, and there's a Luchi nothing happened meme. Which actually I kind of did. Uh, that is actually what happened. Uh, that was all right, pretty dope. Alright, this is a pretty fun chapter. 11-11. Um, now I'm going to see what the, the community has to see. I'm going to look at other reactions. Tap into uh, King of Lightning, uh, tap into Power Vision, BDA Law. See what they all thought about the chapter. I thought this was a pretty good one. So thank you all for tuning in to Manga After Dark. Uh, make sure uh, to tune. Make sure to like, com make, like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't. Uh, peace out. Manga After Dark out. Enjoy y'all weekends.